Welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Jacques. And I'm Swati of the Scientific Affairs team here at Illumina. Do you hear that or is it my ears ringing again? Looks like we have a visitor in our studio today. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that the songs of songbirds have been studied for as a model for speech production in humans? Huh. Yes, I actually did know that. Isn't that fascinating? It's really interesting. Science recently published a number of publications dedicated to studying songbird genomics as part of the avian phylogenomics project. Hmm. And you know, it's important for us to study avian phylogenomics because bird species are declining. I mean, there are about 420 million fewer birds in the most common of bird species. That's about a 20% decrease. It is not only important for us to understand the reasons for this decline, but also to learn about ourselves from our evolutionary ancestors. Whitney et al. collected samples from uh, a total of 54 adult male zebra finches and uh, analyzed the singing-related gene expression in HVC, LMAN, RA, and X area of the zebra finch brain. Now, vocal learning is mediated by area X, located in the striatum, which is a homologue to the mammalian basal ganglia and the lateral magnocellular nucleus of the nidopallium, LMAN, which is located in the pallium, similar to the cortex in humans. Now, vocal production is mediated by HBC, sometimes referred to as high vocal center, and robust nucleus of the acropallium, or RA, which are also located in the pallium. The HVC communicates with area X and RA. Area X communicates with other parts of the brain and relays the information to LMAN, which relays it to RA. RA then relays the messages from HVC and Elman to the vocal muscles and respiratory motor neurons to bring about learned singing response. You know, it's just simply amazing. It's so cool to think we have so much in common with the learning circuitry of songbirds. You know, that gives a whole new meaning to the phrase bird brain. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, well, getting back to the paper, the zebra finches are songbirds, and the researchers wanted to study singing-related gene expression and transcriptional uh, networks. It, it was an interesting finding that the parts of the brain involved in song circuitry all express unique patterns of gene expression. You're right. The, their findings suggest that although all song regions share a core set of genes that can rapidly be upregulated, each region has its own set of dominant, some partly overlapping, behaviorally re regulated genes. This suggests that the gene regulation is specific to each region of the brain and it involves song production. You know, I think the most exciting part in this entire paper for me was the genome-wide chip studies. They performed chrom chromatin immunoprecipitation for histone-3 lysine-27 acetylation or H3K27 acetylation, which is a strong indicator for active enhancers, which means that the genes are turned on. Now, their findings suggest that singing-related genes were already ready to go even before the singing happened. You know, and in addition the, to the histones, they also study expression of the transcription factors. And they found that each of the song regions express specific transcription factors. That in turn activates specific genes. Their RNAi knockdown studies show that the gene regulation was dis disrupted in the absence of the CARF transcription factor. I mean, the complexity of song circuitry is just simply amazing. It is the combination of region-specific transcription factors, their binding motifs, and histone-regulated gene activation. All that and they don't fall off their perch. <laughs> Let alone the interconnectivity of the brain with the body to be able to coordinate such an orchestrated response to produce singing. Speech is difficult to study in human brains. Animals like whales and elephants also learn speech and songs, but they're a bit difficult to house in the lab. As an alternative, we can learn so much from all the scientific collections gathered over the years in places like museums, which really underscores how important it is to maintain and grow these collections. It's very true. Unfortunately, that's all we, all we have time for today. If you have questions or suggestions, we'd love to hear them from you. Please feel free to leave a comment below. We do read them. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Bye.